Yeah, you okay there, Duncan? You keeping up? Jesus, I can't believe it. What a nice evening we had. I feel just like Annika Weiss, uh, but without the big bum and the love handles. <laughs> We've got these official lens on her bum, do you know? Oh, well, we're almost there. Now, I suppose I should uh, introduce you to George. Um, he's a man. He has never modelled ladies swimwear. Uh, he's never been to the moon, but he's probably done most other things. He was a member of the most famous band in the world. Uh, it wasn't the world. What's the name of that band? The Beatles. And uh, oh, we've lost someone. Oh dear. Uh, well, please welcome my next guest, Mr. George Harrison. Is George in here? Can anyone see George? George! Oh, uh, listen, I'm sorry about this. Apparently someone made a cock up and uh, we miss your interview, George. Let me just get my breath out. Let me just no, throw a question at you first. Um, Do you want a drink? Yeah, can you get me a dry sherry or something like that? George, um, the Beatles. Phew. Um, You're not Eamon Andrews, are you? No, I'm not. No. <laughs> okay, let's yeah. just do this interview now because I'm afraid they missed that home. Uh, are we still on the telly then? You're not having a drinking contest with John Peel here, are you? Sorry, yeah. I don't think not. I just found out he isn't really from Liverpool. He's, He's from really? Hensville. You went to see Dylan with him last night, is that right? You no, I didn't go with him, but he, he was there, uh, apparently. Did you like the gig as much uh, as John obviously didn't? Well, he Good didn't help. like it, you know. Some people don't like him, but I think he's brilliant. He sang really good last night, actually. Yeah. That really hit sang the spot. like Bessie Smith and Cam Calloway combined. All the greats. All the greats. Yeah. Let me ask you, do you mind if I ask you the Beatles question? I know it's a long no, time ago. Fine, yeah. well, what do you think you'd have done if the Beatles weren't the, the massive hit they were, or even if they weren't successful at all? Uh, being poor. <laughs> <laughs> probably the same. We probably would have had more fun playing yeah. in clubs like your band. Oh, here they come, look. Yeah, we got to have your band. We would have been yeah. doing things like that. But you were, you were successful very young with the band, obviously. I mean, that must have affected you or changed your life a lot. Yeah, certainly. You know, would you rather it hadn't happened in some ways? Uh, it's, you, you know, it's impossible, isn't it? I mean, would you rather not be on telly right now doing this? Not you right can't now, say that's times. what you do, it's what happens to you and you, you know. It's going to get dragged along in it. That's it, it's, uh, it's all I know, really. Yeah. There was a, I didn't want to be a fire engine or anything like that. <laughs> well, I hope not, it's kind of a difficult it's ambition to fulfill, really, isn't it? <laughs> Do you think, I remember reading a quote, it was kind of the mid-60s, where someone says, oh, the Beatles, they won't be around for, for much longer. There were loads of people yeah. always saying you were... Did you ever think you peaked and that...? No, we thought, uh, really, all we wanted to do was make a record, you know? We just thought, if we could make a record, well, we'll show Cliff in the shadows. Yeah. That really was all our ambition at the time, was just to make a record, and uh, it just got bigger and bigger, and, uh, you know, the second review of the record, the second record that was reviewed, they said, below par people. So, you know, the press were knocking us after we'd only done Love Me Do. So, um, we just kept on going and so just didn't care about what they said, really. It's just like Bob Dylan doesn't care what he says. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but John cares well. He says, <laughs> there's lots of quotes about you talking about some of the songs. I know you said, I mean, there was all the, the big um, fuss about Sgt. Peppers last year because it was the anniversary. And this you, year? Was it this year? Yeah, it was only in June. So I'm too June young, really, to remember that. <laughs> but did you, oh, you I, were seven, weren't you? I was about seven then, yeah. I remember, you know, it being played a lot. But you, you, this year I read a quote, well, I don't know, it was an old quote from you, saying that um, you don't think the songs were that special. Oh, some of them, I liked some of them. They were good. Some of them were just average, I thought. What was it? In, in Hard Day's Night, you were famous, you introduced that word grotty, didn't you? Yeah, well, I didn't make word. it up, though. No, I, mean, I thought you might have some new words you could let us know tonight. Alan Owen, Alan Owen made it up. That was a good word. Yeah. What was the sort of silliest stunt you had to do in the Beatles, or the silliest outfit you had to wear? Uh... Oh, I don't know, really. It was all pretty silly. Did you ever see the Ruttles? The Ruttles was great fun. Yeah, was, and you appeared in that It's just well. like the Ruttles, really. And you're a big pal with Eric Isle, aren't you? Yeah. Good old Eric. Eric. Uh, it's just the trousers. Yeah, I think it was the trousers. <laughs> I, uh, somewhere I read you saying that you'd given up wearing tight trousers that crushed your balls and winkle pickers. Cause they were too yeah, yeah, Is that yeah, what yeah, inspired yeah. you to go to India in the first place? To search for comfortable clothing? Yeah, that's right. Pajamas. Much better. Except it's a bit chilly around England. We're lounging around the house. <laughs> but now, you, of course, you're in the film business because you've got handmade films. Yeah. Which is a busy little company, isn't it? It is. Uh, it's got busy lately. Are we on the telly? Yeah, we still are, I think. Are we still on there? We're hanging in there. It's unbelievable. Do you prefer the film biz to the music business? No. I mean, it's quite good fun as long as you don't have too much to do with it. You know, I, I can be in it or out of it depending on, you know, what mood I'm in. Yeah. But, um, there's a company that continues to make the, the films whether I'm involved or not, really. Yeah. But I, so how I'm much a do you have over, more than anything. How much say do you have over what projects they go with? Quite a lot, really. It's, uh, it's got quite big, really. I mean, there's 35 people working there. I hate reading scripts. They read the scripts. 
and uh, you know we do some of the stuff we read like everybody these days yeah. is a script writer but you probably got one I've got a demo I want you yeah. to play later on the John Peel show but I don't have a script there well uh, in the Shanghai surprise with a handmade film a couple of years ago which was we don't talk about that one <laughs> well what goes wrong no what, you can talk what, about it. what went wrong with Shanghai surprise then? well we just got the wrong director the wrong producer and the wrong actors and the Madonna and Pitt, they say <laughs> They did visit though for an argument. <laughs> what, were they actually, what was Madonna really like then? I don't know. She's just sort of this girl who thinks she's famous. Yeah. Well, she is pretty famous. Well, she is. I suppose she is, yeah. But, you know, she didn't have much of a sense of humour. That's. Um, which wasn't much fun, really, because it was a comedy film. Yeah. It was a bit of a shame, wasn't it? Sean sure, was Latin. okay, I liked him. He, he didn't hit anyone while he was there, he didn't hit your garden. He didn't hit me, no. <laughs> he did hit a few things. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he got a lot of bad press, but he's really quite fun, really. So when you did a press conference for Shanghai, Madonna said, oh, I, George is kind of a father figure to me. How did it feel to hear us say that? <laughs> it doesn't bother me. I don't know. She's watching tonight. She probably is. Probably tuned yeah. in and oh, upset yeah. about what John said about Dylan. I should imagine. Yeah. Now, I know you're, you're one of the passions at the moment is gardening, isn't it? Well, not at the moment. There's too many leaves blowing around the garden. Yeah, I was wondering whether you're going to go home yeah, and tidy up after last night. Get my chainsaw out and cut down a few trees. Now we've got a guitar here, John. You don't fancy giving us a few bars or even? <laughs> few I'm really bars? doing well tonight, oh, aren't I? Oh, call, call me George. Uh, now, of course, you, yeah. John. We, uh, uh, do you oh, you give us a song. Oh, I can't play it. What about John? Do you play it at all? I don't. No, no. Uh, yeah. Have you got a band here? I noticed We've got the band here. Band Johnny Labor, I think. Sorry, you, you Maybe boys. after a few more beers. Do you fancy a cocktail or something? Can you stay on the air that long? I don't know whether we can. Can we get a couple of drinks in here? No, it's too late. I can't believe it. You've got the most stylish guy. You've got one of the richest guys and the sharpest so, music. And we still can't get a drink past 11 o'clock. England, eh? Where's the band then? The band I mean, we could do a skiffle You, you were tax man, didn't you? That's right, yeah. And that was basically you were unhappy with paying vast amounts of Yeah, time. well, aren't we all? But you still live in England. Why, why haven't you become an exile? I like England. Yeah, it's good. But even despite the tax amounts you're paying? Yeah. Well, it's not so bad these days, is it? They pay, uh, well, 52 or something. In those days, we used to make uh, a pound and give them 19 shillings and threepence out of the pound. But it's not quite as bad. But. Um, you know, you have to live where you want to live, really. Did you hear, when we were talking to John earlier, he said that when he was out in America, he was a uh, friend of the Beatles. Famous Liverpool. Yeah, I know. He was Shocking. from Liverpool, you know. Didn't you, once, Liverpool. didn't you once interview yourself and pretend it was George? Uh, I was hoping you wouldn't mention that, actually, <laughs> yes. I used to do George Harrison interviews for a radio station in Minneapolis. Yeah. Why did you choose George instead of the others? Just, uh, well, because I don't know, really. Uh, because everybody else... Because uh, he never said anything. Because uh, he never said anything. You were the quiet one. He was the quiet one of the group. But they say the quiet one's always the wavers. Could be. Were you, uh, <laughs> were you the waver? <laughs> well, I mean, they were all ravers, really. Yeah. Yeah, it's too late now, obviously, for, uh, for the band to get back together at all. But do you regret that you didn't do it while you still had the chance? You mean rave? No, or no, get just back to get together. back together and play again. Not really. I think it was just good as it was, you know. I think it's best left as it was. Yeah. And anyway, at the time we split up, you know, there was too many other people trying to get in the group. <laughs> a lot of other people. Well, yeah. I, I wasn't one of them, but I'm sure John would have been happy to... I'd love to have been. Bang I'd love to have been. Twangy guitar. We could have had two groups, you know, the Beatles and the Beatles' wives. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have been lead vocals? Yoko. Oh, bet. They had a few crackers, Yoko, in the band, didn't they? I remember yeah. the Wailing White Fish or something. Anyway, listen, thank you so much. Enjoy your drinking and good night, boys.